Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I am an ENT surgeon that works for the NHS in central London. You may have seen my other video on tinnitus and I've had an awful lot of comments about that, particularly with relating to, well, how can you do all these techniques and methods until you're absolutely sure you don't have another problem which could be sort of stressing you out and you need that reassurance before you can start going onto those techniques. So what I'll do in this video is to talk about pulsatile tinnitus. Pulsatile tinnitus means a sort of pulsing noise in your ear, like a heartbeat in your ear. There are a few things you should really be looking out for. When I say you, I mean, your doctor will be looking out for to try and work out what is going on. So in this video what I'll be doing is talking about pulsatile tinnitus, the different conditions that cause it and the different tests and investigations that your ENT surgeon or family doctor will be performing to try and work out if there is anything else wrong. Once you know that there's nothing else wrong you can go on to try and help yourself and try and sort out that noise that's going on in your head and for that you need to look at the other video. So this is by no means a complete list. Not all the conditions are here. Obviously there are hundreds and hundreds of conditions that can cause pulsatile tinnitus. The way I've done this is I've divided this up into three major parts. That's how I normally think about it in my head. So I'll go through each part one by one and I'll talk about some of the conditions in each of these sections so that you get an idea of what I really mean by each bit. So vascular masses, that means there's a lump which has a lot of blood flowing through it. It might be because it's just basically made out of lots of blood vessels or, or it's very large and very close to you so you can hear the blood rushing through that lump. Now there are a few lumps what, or, or things that can have a lot of blood flow through it and I'll go through them one by one here. Now not many people have heard of glomus tumors or paragangliomas. Now what these are, they start off as glands which are attached to blood vessels and they typically they act almost like receptors and they monitor the blood pressure or the blood flow through these arteries. If you get them close to your ear, they can sometimes turn into a tumour, normally a benign tumour rather than a cancerous tumour, but it can grow in size. And when they grow in size, they've got an awful lot of blood flowing, flowing through them because they're very close to blood vessels. And that blood flow, sometimes you see them behind the eardrum, uh, you can see it pulsing away. That blood flow you can pick up as a vroom vroom or a, or a heartbeat in your ear. So that's one of the reasons why you might have pulsatile tinnitus for a an actual cause that you can actually see when someone looks in your ear. But there are other things you can sometimes see inside your ear as well, things like aneurysms, arteriovenous malformations, and high jugular bulb. An aneurysm is, is an area of a blood vessel that's dilated up um, suddenly, therefore a lot of blood flowing through that sort of expanded bit of a blood vessel. If it's near your ear or very close to the bone of your skull, you might be able to hear that blood flow through the aneurysm, that dilated pocket of the blood vessel. The other thing is an arteriovenous malformation. So normally an artery goes up into an organ which is full of capillaries, very tiny little blood vessels. So the pulsing uh, artery goes up this way, it goes through the little capillaries, so the blood flow really slows down as it goes through the skin, liver or ear or anywhere and then it dribbles out the other end and then goes into the veins back. But sometimes you can get a connection, so bypassing the capillaries and that organ altogether. It's like a shortcut, so it goes from the artery, it goes right across to the vein and that blood flow goes very quickly uh, through into the vein, so the, you know, the vein's not used to very fast flowing blood. But the blood that's going through there, through this malformation, you can, if it's close to your ear or, or attached to the skull at all, you'll be able to hear it as a pulsing noise often. Again, all of these things are quite rare but it can happen and sometimes we need to uh, look at these things in more depth. A high jugular bulb is well a lot of people know what the jugular is it's a vein that comes up here or actually comes down this way but comes up here goes around the ear and then goes into your brain. Now sometimes as it comes up here it sort of makes a twist like this and then goes into your brain and it goes up into the ear so you can sometimes even see it. Uh, I've seen a few where you can see it through the eardrum you go oh there it is I can see the jugular coming up behind the eardrum. Obviously if you've got something pulsing that's large going past your ear you'll be able to start hearing it and I could say to people that's probably the reason why you have a pulsatile tinnitus. Another rare disease is called Paget's disease. All the bones in our body are constantly being broken down and then remade again. So it's sort of renewing itself, recycling and keeping it nice and strong and new. Now sometimes that balance between breaking down the bone and putting it back together again, this disease, Paget's disease, starts breaking the bone too quickly and, and suddenly the body goes, oh my god, all the bones are starting to fall to pieces because it's been eaten away too quickly. So the body goes, right, get these osteoblasts, these, these little cells that make bone, get in there and make the bone as quickly as possible or otherwise all the bones are going to start breaking. And so the osteoblasts work over time and try and put everything back together again as soon as they possibly can. But as you can imagine, if you try and build something too quickly, they do a bit of a hash job of it. So you do tend to get slightly deformed bones, it becomes brittle, it's not laid down quite as well. Because you're trying to get nutrients and calcium there to try and make the bone, lots of blood vessels go into that bone that's trying to be repaired as quickly as possible. That blood flow it can happen in the skull around near your ear. There's a lot more blood 
blood flow through to the bone to try and get this uh, bone to be repaired. And you can start hearing that in this disease called Paget's disease. To be honest, any mass which has got a lot of blood flow can cause a tinnitus sound in your ear. Uh, this includes sometimes even infections uh, like a cholesterol which is infected. Blood flow goes through infection to try and cure the infection. That blood flow can be picked up as tinnitus and plus cholesterol also causes hearing loss. And if you're really interested, I think there's a video that you can look at about cholesterol. So all of these masses I've been talking about in this section can be picked up normally by scans, uh, a CT scan or an MRI scan. Normally you need to use contrast. Contrast means a, a dye that you put into your veins. All the blood vessels light up and then you can see, oh wow, you've got a really bright spot next to this ear where you can hear your pulsatile tinnitus. And that's how we can pick up these vascular masses through these scans. Now let's move on to the next topic. So I've called this section transmitted sounds because sometimes, weirdly, the heart and sometimes the arteries in your neck can lead to sounds being transmitted from here all the way up into your ear. And you can hear it as a sort of pulsatile tinnitus. The heart's got lots of valves in it. So these valves help the heart with its function. So for example, uh, the left ventricle, the, the big part of the heart just here, squeezes very tightly. The blood flows out of the heart and then goes around your body. But what you don't want to do as soon as the heart relaxes again for that blood to flow right back in again. So they have a valve right at the top here called the aortic valve and that valve opens up when the, the heart is contracting spitting all that uh, blood out so it allows all the blood to come out the heart but it's a one-way valve so it closes again when the blood tries to come back into the heart but sometimes that valve doesn't open up very well instead of it opening up like this it opens up like this or, or something smaller than that. And that's called stenosis, aortic stenosis. When you get aortic stenosis or a narrowing or a, a stricture or whatever you want to call it of that valve, when the blood comes through, it finds it very hard. It's like putting your thumb over the end of a, of a hose or something. And it goes and comes out like this. That means that it doesn't flow very nicely. You get an awful lot of turbulence as the blood comes out of the heart and that noise that's been generated through the arteries in your neck and around your body, you can sometimes pick up in your ear with this noise that comes up and that is often translated as pulsatile tinnitus. It tends to happen in both ears but maybe one ear more than the other. The, the opposite can happen as well. The aortic valve may not may open fine but it may not be acting as a one-way valve anymore and it falls down like this so the blood comes out and then pours back in again which is terrible for the heart but the heart goes oh god I've got all this extra blood and it works really hard to flush this blood out again but it then just pours back in again. It's a terrible condition the heart has to work really really hard and the harder it pushes that can in itself cause a noise as well because it's working so hard to get the blood out of itself. Uh, then that's called aortic regurgitation. It regurgitates back into the heart. That's why it's called regurgitation. Again, a sort of a floppy valve problem here. Again, that causes pulsatile tinnitus. Another problem slightly related to this is that the carotid arteries, these, these where you can feel your pulse in your neck, these blood vessels that go into your brain and, and gives you um, blood for your brain and your face and, and your sinuses everywhere, that, that blood vessel there can become slightly furred. Uh, when we say furred, I mean like atherosclerotic plaques, blood vessel disease from eating lots of fat and Western diets, basically. And that slowly narrows those blood vessels. And when you narrow some, just like the aortic stenosis, where you put your thumb at the end of a, a hose pipe, the blood flowing through it becomes turbulent again and you can start hearing it. With these three things, the valve problems and carotid problems or narrowing of the carotids, you need to use ultrasound technology. So an ultrasound of your heart or otherwise known as an echo, where you examine the heart and examine the valves to see what's going on. And you can see the blood flow as it comes out, but also ultrasounding of the neck, we'd call a Doppler or something, where you see the blood flowing through the carotid and you can see if, where it's fizzing away or a narrowing or things like that. So sometimes if we suspect that this is a problem, your doctor may send you off for an ultrasound type investigation. So a hyperdynamic state, I'm sorry, I'm not very good at making titles for these things, but a hyperdynamic state means that blood is coursing around your body very quickly, very swiftly. And it's going so quickly that you can hear it rushing past your ear and giving you that pulsatile tinnitus. And there are lots of reasons for this. One is anemia. A lot of people get anemia. If you don't have enough blood in your system, but you still need to oxygenate all the parts of your body, the blood gives oxygen for the whole of your body. What will have to happen is that the blood will need to go around quicker. It's about, it's like saying, look, we've got a hundred postmen normally and we've got a, a thousand letters to post. If we lose 50% of our postmen for whatever reason, we still have to live, deliver all of these letters 
So what we'll do is we'll get those 50 last postmen that we've got to run around twice as fast to deliver all those letters in time. That's not a very good um, example or an analogy, but, but I hope you understand to get the same amount of oxygen around the body in time, you just have to go quicker. And when you go quicker, you can start hearing that because sometimes anemia causes this pulsatile tinnitus. There's another thing that can cause pulsatile tinnitus is something called thyrotoxicosis. So that basically means that you have too much thyroxine. Thyroxine is a hormone made by the thyroid gland here. When you have too much thyroxine, this hormone, it makes your body run faster than normal. So uh, your heartbeat goes quicker, uh, your stools become quicker, your menstrual cycle goes all over the place, uh, you start shaking, you start getting anxious, uh, all sorts of things. Your whole body clock speeds up and that can translate to your heart pumping quicker and therefore you get this hyperdynamic state which can cause pulsatile tinnitus. And sometimes the hyperdynamic state can be caused by the drugs that we doctors give to patients. There are drugs that can speed up the blood flow through the body, like uh, vasodilator drugs or things that makes the heart beat quicker. All sorts of things can cause pulsatile tinnitus. So to find out if you've got a problem with a hyperdynamic state, you need to get your family doctor to look through your medications just to make sure that there isn't something there that may be causing this problem. And also you might need some blood tests to look for thyroid levels or, or anemia level, all sorts of things. So this simply needs some blood tests sometimes. And again, you can talk to your um, family doctor about that. Now your doctor may speak to you and say, look, actually, you don't need these scans. You, you don't need these blood tests, but you do need this. Or you may not need anything. Or you may need more investigations because he or she has found a different thing that you may may be causing your uh, tinnitus problem. Now, if your doctor has cleared you and found, look, there's no other problem whatsoever, let's send you to the tinnitus clinic. Let's let them help you sort this out. Um, hopefully you'll get better very quickly. But if you want a bit more information about the sort of things that helped me with my tinnitus, you can look at this video around about here. But for the meantime, thank you very much. You take care. Bye-bye.